afternoon to everyone. I am really very happy and honored and really very excited to have all of you here. Thank you for braving the traffic coming here to Quezon City and the parking challenge here at Victorinos. Never mind, they serve good Philippine, uh, sorry, good Filipino food. And I guess you cannot get any more FQ than that, diba? So as most of you may already know, I am at Ilocana. Both my parents are from the land of the thrifty. Are there any Ilocanas in the house? So our parents didn't just teach us the language, how to speak it fluently, but they also raised us in a very frugal way. And I will always be very thankful um, about my frugal upbringing. And when I say frugal upbringing, it's not the caricature, puripot, ilohano, to the point that nagmumukha ng yagir. Excuse me, not my mom. <laughs> Our parents raised us to feel special with all the reason to be happy and confident despite the little that they had starting their family here in Manila. I remember back in the day, my mom would sew our turn of turn of clothes. We are five in the family, five children. Four girls, I'm the youngest daughter, and then our only boy is the youngest. One morning, um, after waking up, I was going down to our living room, and there I saw my mom. She was putting the finishing touches of her latest creation, yung mga terno terno. So she was laying down the four mumus. Do you know what mumu is? It's what we now call maxi dress. Okay, so daughter one gets the red mumu, daughter number two gets the green mumu, Daughter number three gets the yellow mumu. And guess what daughter number four, that's me, gets? What? All of the colors. And why is that? Because she just made use of all the retasos of my three older sister's mumu. But you know what? I thought it was the most beautiful mumu of them all. And why do I tell you this mumu story? It's because I wanted, I wanted to share with you that living frugally doesn't need to be that melodramatic. Diba? Yung mga yagit-yagita natin. It could actually be fun and I thought it was the coolest thing. I guess my mom raised us to have a healthy relationship with money. And that's why I dedicate this book to my mom. We lost her last year to lymphoma after battling cancer for the years. Wait. Enough of that. So this Mumu girl, what happened to the Mumu girl, that's me, she became an investment banker. So she was able to complement her frugal way of living with investment knowledge. Together with her favorite person in the world, Honey. And then early on during my early motherhood years, I was faced uh, with a crossroads, whether to continue with my investment banking career, and I decided to give it up in order to divide, uh, to devote my focus and undivided attention to the growing up years of Martin and Luke and Anton. And you know, I did this during the time that we were building our dream house. It might sound actually very impractical or in fact crazy for some, to give up half of the family income during the time that you're constructing a house. But you know what happens even sometimes when we make these crazy, audacious decisions? They bring us pleasant surprises. So little did I know that this was going to be the seed of my kaefkyuhan. Because what happened is that I had to watch our expenses like a hawk. Construction costs had to be really controlled. Nung naubos na yung budget, Okay na, we have to move in without landscape, kahit medyo adikabok pa. And of course, that's when my crazy habit of preparing our family financial statements was really reinforced. I would prepare our family income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. And I know that sometimes na irritate na si Hani kasi I really, I really like to account to the last centavo. But now, well, he has gotten used to it. Na niya because I don't account anymore to the last, to the last centavo. 
I've learned to round off to the last peso, to the nearest peso. Okay, Bajun, did you read from PGIC? Okay, so um, this OCNES also was extended to my poor children. Ay, hindi pala sila poor. <laughs> and that's not because they have mana or a huge trust fund, you know, but it's only because they're able to save and invest on a regular basis. And as what you say, probably at ABS-CBN, a show business, but what you say is that once an actress, always an actress. In my case, I think I could say once a finance person, always a finance person. Kasi tinuro ako yung mga anak ko to prepare their balance sheets also as early as grade school. And they had to update it and submit to mama every quarter. Wow. <laughs> Yes, But what did this do to my children? Did it abuse them? <laughs> Were they traumatized? No. I think what this did to the boys is that early on, they really were uh, exposed to how money really works. No? That there is another way to enjoy utility from money. You don't always have to spend it because you can actually grow it. And when it comes to money, kasi, di ba, para mga abstract concepts, it's easier if there's a balance sheet. They could see their shares of their favorite stocks growing, like Jollibee, Ayala. Instead of buying that gizmo, they know that they can grow their money. By saying, and I think that's the reason why my oldest son reacted that way when he heard of a story of a man who used to earn pretty well but was not able to um, prepare for his retirement. And I'd like to share that short paragraph with you. In the introduction, it says, after hearing a sad story of someone who didn't prepare for his retirement, my son, who was still in grade school then, asked, Ma, how can someone not prepare for his retirement? He asked it in great disbelief, as if it was the most unusual thing to do, or not to do for that matter. He asked that question devoid of the usual pity we adults would have but it was also one without hubris and disrespect. It was just an innocent question, full of wonder how a person could miss something so basic, pretty much like, how can you not brush your teeth every day? And I think this is a very important sentence to ponder upon. How can someone miss something so basic like brushing your teeth? Come to think of it, you know, when we raise our children, and this is not just in the Philippines, but all over the world, we seem to have a universally agreed upon age when to teach certain skills. For example, our children should be able to walk when they reach around the age of one, right? They should be able to talk between the ages of one and two. And they should be able to read at the age of, um, it depends, if you're a uh, uh, a very competitive mother, you want your child to be able to read already before he takes the entrance exam in Ateneo or Xavier or any competitive school for that matter. But when it comes to teaching your children about money, we don't seem to have a universally agreed upon age when we're supposed to do it, you know? You notice that? And why is that? It's because we seem to attach way too many emotions and a lot of myths when it comes to money. And this stigma about talking about money goes on into our adult lives. It is always left as the elephant in the room. Diba? Uy, pamilya yan. Huwag magkwentahan. Diba? You always hear that. And, you know, my heart cries out when I receive letters from my readers all over the world, mga OFWs, they would share with me how sad they are actually working in their host countries and worried that they may be sending almost all of their earnings to their relatives here na parang pensionado. I'm also a little bit worried about the millennials who may be so used to material pampering because of absentee parenting. You know, millennials, these guys are really good guys then. It's just that they're very distracted and uh, and dami kasi nipo post sa social media and it's everything is just so easy to buy these days you can buy everything with just one click and that is why Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world right now so what chances 
are these kids, if they don't change <coughs> their behavior in spending and saving and investing, they will also grow up not prepared for retirement, not prepared for a decent old age. Um, I've been invited by several companies to give FQ talks to their employees, and usually they give priority to those who are about to retire in a year or two. But what can I really say that would really help these people who are about to retire? I can only tell them, please don't splurge your retirement money on house renovations or a grand trip, or don't put it in a business that you know nothing about, basic law number two. No? Because really, usually what I tell them is that, you know, you should continue to earn, not only for your pocket, but for your sanity. Because I, I think that the age of 60 as a retirement is quite obsolete. Do you know that retirement was invented back in the 1800s by Otto von Bismarck? He's a Prussian politician, and it was a political move. And during that time, hardly anyone really reached 60. So it was working. So we really have to also rethink retirement. In line with this book, I've been also seeing some companies and really trying to um, convince them that the time to do all these FQ talks is when your employees are still young. But you know, it's not an easy sell. Because they cannot see the connection right away, right? Um, they don't know, they don't realize that money needs time to grow. As we always say in investing, time in the market is more important than timing the market. Yung mga market timing, let's just leave that to Wilson C. and Edward D, di ba? Tayo, ano na lang, regular saving and investing as the cash flow come in, meron ka na itatabi at i-invest. Sometimes now, if I compare myself, si Martin kasi my oldest, he just put up his own brand audit and consultancy firm. He seems to have an easier time convincing clients ano, to, to take a look at their brand. Ako parang nahihirapan ako to convince clients na, you know, we have to do something about your employees now. Now, wala. And maybe because you know, the bottom line connection is not so obvious. But let me share with you some studies how important it is for business owners to really mind the FQ of their employees. Studies show that employees experiencing financial stress are, number one, two times more likely to use sick leave, even when not ill. Notice that early. Number two, three times more likely to take prescription drugs for chronic illness. And number three, among those who are behind retirement savings, only one out of 10 is productive at work. So can you imagine that? You're losing 90% of optimal productivity. And what more, even at home, they say seven out of 10 marital problems are really about money. They say money is an exaggerator. And if I may inform you, when I say money products, we're not just talking about the lack of it. Because you can have loads of money and still have a low FQ. Because as we mentioned earlier, having a high FQ is having a healthy relationship with money. And that is the main message of my book in FQ the End Intelligence. I want everybody to mind his or her FQ and to understand his relationship with money not to be intimidated by money. That's why in the book, I speak to you in a language that's easy to understand. I tell you stories of childhood money memory, of FQA book tips, including one from Fernando Zobel. Check out page 39. And there are exercises in the book that will help you really understand your relationship with money, which is the foundation really of a high FQ. Magpapol style ako FQ. The, this book is really a call to all families to start talking about money in a healthy way. It is a call for parents to raise their children with high FQ. It is a call for business owners and key decision makers to help their employees mind their FQ now. It is a call for everyone to mind this FQ and have a good relationship with money. I partnered with ABS-CBN Publishing in order to reach more people. And I'd like to thank Rick Tan. Is he there? Rick, thank you for introducing me to ABS-CBN Publishing. And also, I'd like to invite all of you here to help me spread the word. 
please share with your loved ones and the people within your circle of influence the message of this. Let us mind our FQ. And as what was mentioned by my sons, if you'd like to donate, um, you can donate in the three elementary schools, public schools that we've identified. For each book that you donate, I will also be giving a counterpart donation. So, I hope that by doing this someday, we will be able to improve FQ. We will be able to make saving and investing as regular and as automatic as brushing your teeth. And hopefully when this happens, we can really say that our beloved Philippines is a prosperous country. Again, thank you very much for coming to my book launch and joining me in this afternoon. Thank you.